Hello. Oh, there we are. <clears throat> hmm. A familiar setting. All right. And where we go again? When Stanley came to a set la, of two la, open la, portals, la, la. this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire la, it. La, 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 la. Hello. Standing now in this incredible room, Stanley for the first time understood true happiness. Oh, you have no idea. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. Let's go up and all the way over there this time. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot hmm. here. I'm not your enemy, I haven't really, played really. the original one. I realize that investing apparently, your trust in someone else can be difficult, the but the fact is that the story has been about well, nothing but you. Well, Half-Life 2, I don't know what it's a mod for. It was Half-Life 1 and Half-Life 2. Someone you've been I never played it, never heard about it until... Someone you've forgotten about. ...until uh, Steam Please. announced... Stop Stanley trying Barrel to make itself. every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me. I'm asking for her. Ooh, this is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been waiting. Yeah. Yeah. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. Hello? I can't see. I'm blind. Oh, hello. Oh, Stanley, is that you? Uh, hold on, sweetie. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven. Okay. All right. Oops, sorry. Okay, it's my there you go. All right, now, <clears throat> I want you to come in and tell me all about... Your day. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha! Oh, come on. Did right. you actually think you had a yet. loving wife? Who'd want to commit their oh. life to you? Hello. I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Moshi, come moshi. inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. <whistles> Sorry, but you're in my story now. Ooh. Snap. All right. Let's do it. Sup, sexy. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. Come at me, bro. Toby, you want some? Press Q on your keyboard. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. Wow. I want to press 8. You press 8. <sighs> All right, whatever. Look at him there, pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told to do. <laughs> now I he's think Toby's over everything now, now. He's eating lunch. Now he's going home. Now he's coming back to work. Like One he's might seriously even feel sorry sick for and him, tired of this shit. <laughs> he's chosen this life. Ah oh, well. Please press Z. But in his mind, ah, in his mind, he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown. Fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned stuff. to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. <sighs> please, please press 9 and watch, oh, to watch TV. And so he began to Ooh. fantasize about his own job. It changed. First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the Egg earth. Up. The thought excited him terribly. So, he went further. He's really he imagined that he came to this, two open he? doors and that he could I go think through I think either. Toby. At last, choice. It barely even mattered what lay right, behind stand each by. door. I need to adjust the my microphone. That his Hopefully decisions would mean something it. was almost too wonderful to behold. Excellent. Uh, press G. As he wandered oh, no. through this fantasy world, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. 
Down one path lay an enormous <sighs> round room with monitors and mind controls. I miss controls. the good old days. And down another was Aren't a yellow you, line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he baby. called it oh, the Stanley geez. Parable. Mm. Yep. It was such a wonderful fantasy. And so in his head, he relived it again. And then again, and again, over and this, over, this is wishing when beyond you do hope not that would never end, never, that he might ever piss off the narrator. Free. Surely there's an answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just it one is. more it's time. It is. It's turning into an office, and it's slowly going because I. But there is oh. no answer. All How right. could there possibly be? In it's reality, it's going to turn into the full office, and we reset all over again. Changed. The longer this he motherfucker spends thinks here, the I'm gonna go through the left he door, gets, the but more I'm he not. Which life is the real one? Let's and go I'm to sleep. I'm to tell him this: oh, that in this it. world Put he can like never be anything but an observer. That as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. Like he truly he believes that I'm he gonna stop. go into yeah, uh, watch this. that right, Stanley, that left door. The next time the screen asks you to push a button. Do not do it. Don't tell me what I can and can't do, bitch. You see? Can he just not hear me? No. How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? Give me a mirror? I Ooh. suppose I can't. Not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps. Well, should I cooperate and listen we'll to Toby, or should I just maybe continue to do time. what I want? JPEG. And I tried again. Please, and Stanley still pushed a button. And I scratch that. I ain't listening to Toby anymore button. after that remark. And I try. Nope. Oh. Have you reset on me? Nope, I've died. Am I dead? Nope, loading, cool. All of his co workers were gone. What could it mean? I Stanley feel like I need to, to progress to through the Perhaps story of some time, because I've gone through this office about a bazillion times now. Because he's gonna be like. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Okay. <laughs> this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. I'm not going to listen to you. Stanley felt lightheaded, butterflies in his stomach, giddy in a way he had never known before. But <laughs> eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Uh, no, nah, I'm gonna go this way. Almost ran into the door. I didn't care. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. I like ago. this way. This way is fun. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm hey, not Tobes. your enemy, really, I'm not. No? I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. Yeah. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. We? What? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you I'm have busy. zero Maybe consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Why, I don't know how to convince <laughs> you of this, <laughs> but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Hello? Let me prove that I'm on your side. Okay. Give me a chance. Sure. Now listen carefully, this is important. Okay. Stanley walked through the red door. You got it, buddy. Yep. Aha, perhaps you misunderstood. Stanley walked through the red door. No. I still don't think we're communicating properly. Stanley walked Fine. through the red door. Whatever. Yes, thank God you are willing to listen to me. Do you see that I really have wanted you to be happy all this time? I will the problem play by your rules. choices. The two of us always trying to get somewhere that isn't here. Running and running and running, just the way you're doing right now. Don't you see that it's killing us? And you're making me do laps. Like, just, what is the purpose of this? I wanted to stop. I would... We would both be so much happier if we just stopped. And stop. I think... Well, I think I have a solution. Here, let me show you. Duh. Ooh. 
Huzzah. Where am I? Oh, okay. Hmm. What do we want? What are we looking for? Hmm. Oh, I can walk. What's this? Here. Yes. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? Ooh. If we just stay right here, right in this moment with this place, Stanley, I think I feel happy. Ooh. I actually feel That's happy. That's pretty. <laughs> No, Ooh. wait. Where are you going? This way. Come, Tobes. Oh, no. Stay away from those stairs. If you hurt yourself, if you die, the game will reset. We'll lose all of this. Hmm. I don't know. Please, no, Stanley, let me stay here. Don't take this from me. Do what I want. Oh, I can just plumb to my death. Alright, I need to aim for something. Please, aim. Stanley, think about aim what you're go. doing. Alright, I reckon I can go for that. No! Nah. Ow. Oh, thank God you lived. You had me worried there for a moment. La, no. La, la, la. no, no, what are you doing, Stanley? Please, I'm asking you not to take this away from me. I can't go back to what I was before. If you die, we'll both go back. Why are you doing this? Get back, real world. Stanley, let's go back to the uh, other room. Fine. Can you do that for me? Okay. Yes. Perhaps you can. Ooh. Perhaps you finally see what I'm talking about. Ooh. I know you'll see. You'll see that we can't be happy beautiful. if we admit. leave this place. You can see that, can't just... you? Oh, I can't walk off the edge. The colors. The colors. Ooh. Alright, I'm bored. No, perhaps not. I just like going my own way. I mean, is that too much to ask? My God! I want to just. Is keep... this really how much you dislike my game? I don't dislike the game. To I just throw want to yourself press... from this platform over and over to be rid of it? You were literally willing to kill yourself to keep me from being happy. Yahoo! Am I reading the situation correctly? Or maybe you're just getting a kick out of it. I am. I don't know anymore. I just wanted us to get along, but I guess that was too much to ask. No. It looks like you wanted to make a choice after all. Well, this Whee! one is yours. Is it over? Oh. It's going to restart, <laughs> isn't it? I'm going back. <laughs> Alright, I I will officially take the left door. All of his co-workers were Finally. gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. I will take the left door. No psych, no nothing. I'll I'll take it because when Stanley came to a set of two I, open I'm curious doors, as to he entered what, the door on his left. What will actually happen? So you know, ah. this was not the correct way to the so, meeting you know, room, I'm just keep and Stanley knew it way. perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee. <laughs> but I will go in the maintenance bit. Um, just to so, like, it. there's a door on the left that's up here. The lounge I'm go was grand, that. And, um, majestic. Perhaps I'll progress from there because I don't want to take business, that left door. Stanley initially. took the first open door on his left. like. What's in here? And so he detoured through Hello? the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. Oh, that gets me back on track, and that just takes me to a new thing. Alright, you know what? Let's, let's go this way. I haven't been this way now. I've been in all the options, I think, and it's time for... Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, okay. Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, Wait. hoping he might find an answer there. How to solve a dispute with a co-worker? Little blob, and so you take <laughs> passive aggressively on other co-workers. Present co-workers at this point. It sort of sounds like one of the old telemarketing jobs I once had. Broom. Ooh. This looks like Stanley one. stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Let's see what I can do. Can I pick up the wrench? Is there there a was crowbar? nothing here. No choice to make. No path to follow, just an empty broom closet. 
no reason to still be here. Shut up, I'm looking for stuff. Alright, you know what, let's just go. Stay there? No, they want me to stay there, Toby, I'm sorry, I must listen to the people. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. The he wasn't on even Twitch doing spoken, anything. my friend. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, yeah. he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. <laughs> Alright. Toby's getting a little bit closer to breaking point. Are you, are you really still in the broom closet? Standing around doing nothing? Why? Please offer me some me explanation to. here. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. I was asked about it. I don't know why I'm talking to a light bulb, but I was asked. You do realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. I but it didn't even occur true. to me because literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention it. To you, go. this is somehow its own branching path. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? <laughs> the broom closet ending was this my favorite. Oh, then, I hope yeah. your friends find your this. Your spelling and grammar's all over the shop there, man. Maybe I like the broom closet ending. Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. Whoa. He probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. Whoa. Or with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. That escalated quickly. Well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. Am I? You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here. When a physical melody a of, of some too. sort shut down your central nervous radio system active and you collapsed on the keyboard. Well, in a situation like this, the responsible like thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. Please. Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? The person at this computer is dead. He or she has fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place at the computer, making sure they understand basic first-person video game oh, mechanics and filling understand. them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming, Toby so that the irony like and insightful like commentary of this I game do this. is do not lost on them. I can't help it. All right, when you've done that, just step out into the hallway. No. I like it in here, it's cozy. Oh, maybe I should go. Alright, let's go. Ah, second player. It's good to have you on board. I coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Nah. I like exploring. Exploring's so much fun. Ooh. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he that. believed everyone had vanished. Mine a loop. Oh, his God. boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. I'm in the loop. None of it made any Help. logical sense. And as Stanley I mean pondered adult. this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, point. these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all <laughs> too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming! I'm not dreaming, Eel. I'm playing a game. This is all a dream. This is amazing. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt mm -hmm. to have finally found an answer. I'm an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. 
he wasn't crazy after all. I'm crazy. He thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real life job pushing buttons. I no. may as well enjoy this while I'm I still can't see my feet. I am a ghost. So, he imagined himself flying and right. began to gently float above the ground. Whoa. Then he imagined himself Whoa. soaring through space on a magical Jeez. star field, and it too appeared. Whoa. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had Whoa. still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? Whoa. And then perhaps the strangest Kirk question the of the drug. all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Man, Why I'm is get there out of this a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, I love this and wondered game. if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley right. is as awake right now as he's ever cup? been nope. in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too, surely, surely, if Ooh. he could just... Maybe Turby he would is prove it. Stanley's He would prove that head. he was in control, mm. that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. Oh. Good night. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment, and my wife, and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Okay. Good morning. Stanley began uh, screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. <laughs> All right. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Oh, hello, Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. Oh, dear. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. <laughs> and although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, that's, she that's thought Stanley, to herself how lucky she was to be normal. <clears throat> oh, yeah, I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then I'm she. I'm not even going to call an ambulance or anything. Wow, that's inconsiderate. 